Hey, 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 guys, it is Allison. I am the host of your show, Allison Answers Mission Awake. I cannot wait to sit down with you today and go over how we are going to crush the mediocrity in your life that has been plaguing our society since the beginning of time. I cannot wait to have a real deal conversation that includes intelligence, fun, excitement, and real actionable steps to make a real difference in the life that you're living now and making it into something you can be damn proud of and excited to live. Sit down, put on your damn seatbelt, and get ready for the ride of your life. Hey, 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 guys, how are you today? We have a great second part of our interview with Bradley Roth. We really get into it on this part too. And usually I find that on a podcast that sometimes when you move through a conversation, you get to the meat of the matter towards the end. So we split up this interview with Bradley because we really wanted to deliver this part. We didn't want it to get too long where you would miss probably the best part. So what Bradley and I go over and we just like dig into the raw data of what relationships are all about and what makes them work, what makes them not work. And we talked about several different things about not jumping to conclusions of the power of semantics in a relationship, of how we lack um, good role models as we're growing up in regard to who is in a good relationship, which is hard to find. We talk about all different things, like not most people, what most people do not do in relationships that would actually save the relationship. So put on your seatbelts. You're really going to love it. Bradley drops a lot of stuff. And we're really like just in a conversation, almost like we're in the living room, you know, just we're just hanging out, having a conversation. I think we forgot we were recording. So just I think that There's a lot of value here if you're having any issues in your relationship or if you have anything going on. Another thing is, is that I'm my my next podcast, I'm going to be dropping a podcast that's a solo podcast where I'm just going to talk about every single thing that will destroy a relationship. That's what my next podcast is. I'm going to go through the destructive patterns that ruin a relationship and have caused a very high divorce rate. And I really hope that you'll tune into that one because I wish I knew these things when I was in my 20s, when I was in my 30s, because these are really important factors in regard to any type of a relationship. So I'll see you on the other side with Bradley. Take care, guys. It's so interesting because I feel like people like will scream for or attack for love, like to feel loved or to feel not scared. And it's the exact, it causes the exact opposite. That's it. Yeah. You know, most people are fighting because fighting and they're both screaming the same issue. They both want the other person to love them. That's it. And connect with them. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's the same thing, right? Like, again, if we go back to politics, it's like, we want the same things, but we're just focusing on the differences or the things we disagree on. Yes. Yes. Right. And it's like, there's so much, like, when you think about these things, right? Like, these are the skills I think that create um, excellence and success in life. Mm -hmm. Because really having a good relationship, isn't that so much wealth? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there's highs and lows and there's days where you're like, it doesn't feel like wealth, but yeah. but overall, like it's a, it's a net positive for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're trying to like really push yourself and do big things, like you're going to hit walls, you're going to burn out, you're going to need someone to like lean on who's in your corner, no matter what. Yeah. Um, and that becomes invaluable if you, yeah. if you can get to that point, you know, cause I know there was again, early on in our relationship, it created a lot more stress than it helps, you know, and that's, I think a lot, like most relationships are points of stress. And that's why like, you know, half of people get divorced and the other half of people, more than half of people who are still together, they are either, you know, cheating on each other or they're miserable together or whatever. And that's why, like, I'd say only, you know, 10% of relationships are happy long-term because it's, it takes so much to get to that point where it, it works long-term. 
You know what I think is incredible? If we could, if we could get really, I hope I'm going to be able to say this in a way that's not so abstract that it's weird, but it's basically like what you're describing is not most people. And that's mm-hmm. how you and Nancy want to live. Not most people. Right. And I'm thinking about like, it's funny because Mark Ferrelli, he's, he was an RTA. I don't know if you know him. Yep, he's he in, he's in the podcast. alliance. Oh, I love him. I'm so yeah. glad I'm joining. So, <laughs> so he was on my podcast and he said, he asked me a question off camera. He said, Allison, could you tell me the reason that you think most people get divorced? Yeah. And I just started like listing reasons. Uh-huh. And um, he's like, you should make a podcast on that. So I'm going to. But one of the things that um, we were talking about, which is this, is that I believe that just like personal development, a relationship is like an organism, right? So the relationship, I always think a relationship is your first child. Mm. So, you know, you have two people, they come together and that's the first, you're building that, you're creating in that, you're teaching that, you know? And um, the thing I really believe relationships do is that they call, they take two human beings that cause friction with one another. And the design really is to create something great in each one and Mm -hmm. then something great synergistically. But because we're afraid as human beings, you know, we're, we will take the friction. So remember, I don't know when we were talking about it, like pain, you can Mm -hmm. take pain and you can react to it and be a victim or destructive, destructive or whatever, or you can take pain or friction and you can say, as a baseline mindset, I know that this problem is here to make me better. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to use that to make myself a better human. Whatever Nancy is kicking up in me is now it's going to make me a better man. And I mm-hmm. got to find that. So I'm going to go inside and find that I'm not going at Nancy right now. I'm going to me because she's given me that opportunity to feel this shit. Right. Yeah. And then you take then the two people doing that end up create this alliance, (laughs) not most people alliance that like magnifies, like, you know, it has like this powerful effect. So Mm -hmm. like, she's your opportunity for growth, right? Yeah. I think your face, (laughs) you're like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I mean, like, I typically process before I speak. And so I'm like thinking through just a lot of different things, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think eventually, again, if you can get to that point where it's like, we're on the same team and we're not against each other, we're, we're trying to help each other. Then you can reframe into like, okay, you do want to be better for the other person. But suppose you know I mean? not, suppose but, you're not on the same team mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about you guys and you're not getting along. Yeah. But now you're experiencing, it could be anything, so, somebody at work or whatever, and like an external event comes mm. and you have this internal feeling, this experience, right? Inside, like we have choices in that moment. Usually most people, Bradley, mm-hmm. go outward and they look at that person and how that person created that feeling in me. It's your fault, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then like the not most people like you, go inward and ask the question, okay, what is it about this circumstance, this person that has given me the opportunity to feel this feeling? When have I felt this feeling before? That's when we ask ourselves all those questions. We have so much shit to work on in ourselves. We don't have any, right. There won't be any time to look at that other person, (laughs) you know, and then we improve. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. I mean, I think it just ties into like, you're hearing more and more of this concept of like extreme ownership, right? Like taking responsibility for kind of every situation in your life. And so most people want to look outwards, they want to blame. Uh, and it's just, again, kind of like avoiding doing the own work. So I think it, it all just comes down to like, if you, if you can't work on yourself, like your relationship's probably not going to work because you're always going to be pointing the finger at the other person. Yeah. And, uh, and again, we already we already discussed how that just kind of brings up more and more friction. And yeah, uh, yeah. so like, and, and a lot of it's mirrors too. Like if you're getting angry at um, the other person, it's probably bringing up something yourself that you're not comfortable with and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I think without 
without like people working on themselves, it's really, really hard for the two of them to flourish together. It's just really everything, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like to the degree we grow is to the degree all the other areas of our life grow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. When did I go too far into your like personal life right there? No, like uh, we're pretty open about it because because <laughs> I think I've always said like relationships are are these one things that's like when you look again at health wealth relationships like there's so much health information out there there's so much business information out there but relationships like people are very private they tend to hold close to the chest they don't want to share about and so I think you need more people like talking about these things. And because like, we don't have good models, right? Like, because when we look at, like, we have lots of business models out there that we can follow and emulate. We have lots of health people we can emulate, but like relationships wise, most of us emulate our parents and the vast majority of people did not grow up in a household with a healthy relationship as an example. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to find those examples because you look elsewhere and you might see on the surface, people have great relationships, but it's, you rarely are able to dig into that and find good examples. So I think it's really important um, for more people to kind of like be talking through these things and giving examples and for people to like, because I I think people in relationships think it's like just them that's going through this stuff. Right. And they hear people that are like, Oh, wow. Like I can relate to that. That's helpful. Like um, we can apply that to us, you know? So I think there's so many, so fewer models in that area than other areas. And so, you know, I haven't really told, I told a few people, but we do have plans to create kind of a sub branch of not most people called not most couples. And Love do, that. yeah. So, so I'm like, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, but like a lot more kind of coaching and events and community around kind of being like a next level couple. And also for lots of entrepreneurs and high performers who are in relationships, because that brings a whole nother dynamic into things that isn't really uh, talked about a whole lot. So that's something uh, I guess you kind of got a sneak peek here. You know what I think is so incredible is that, you know how like collectively things just start happening. I have, I so much in Arte, I was saying to like a group of people who we have these meetups here Mm -hmm. and I was saying to them like, um, and they're couples and how they're driven and their wives are, you know, taking care of the babies or whatever. And how I was saying we should have like a meetup where I was going to like help them mm-hmm. like with their marriages and stuff. And I like I was thinking of having like an Arate, you know, like Zoom call to, you know, because mm-hmm. I do marriage counseling, like to, to mm-hmm. help people like work on basic stuff. And I think you are so right. Like you two as a couple, think about like, what would you share? Like you sharing your struggle mm-hmm. is like, and the vulnerability would help so many people. Yeah. Don't you think? It's, it's not sharing theory. It's like, it's just all things that we've learned and gone through on our own. No, that's what I mean. Like the experience, mm-hmm. like your, like your, your vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like really being like real, like, yeah, it's not, you know, sometimes I think this, mm-hmm. right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some days we want to strangle each other, you know, and then, yeah. <laughs> but, but, then people but it's learning to so kind of alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They feel like it's just them. And then it's also difficult when like, you know, one or one or both people in the relationship is very driven and had put so much time and energy into, uh, you know, what they're building and then balancing that and, and all that kind of, there's, there's a whole lot that comes with that too. But, um, yeah, I think it's super important. I think it's an area where like, you know, you're seeing less and less like strong family nucleuses that stay together long and have good parents for the kids and how that, you know, obviously affects the kids long-term and stuff like that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's super important. I really, really, you know, I'll tell you something, Bradley, I think that you're really onto something really important, obviously important because it's, it's even just saying like, you know how, like Andy talks about, like, it's the entrepreneurs that we're going to, you know, no one's coming to save us. You know, mm-hmm. it's the small businesses, the entrepreneurs who are going to really help to change this country. Yeah. And you being like this, you know, you're a young, early married couple, right? Who has so much personal development. There's so much for you to give in that area. Like, what would mm-hmm. you, what would you, what advice would you give? Or I don't know about advice, but like, like, what would you share with 
couples who are like just struggling and don't believe like they don't see or they feel ashamed i think people feel ashamed when they're having struggles in their relationship mm -hmm. they hide it right yeah yeah because i mean like it's one of those things that affects everything like if you're in a fight with your significant other like you you don't really think about a whole lot else during the day at least yeah. with a clear head or whatever um but really i think like i kind of touched on it it comes down to personal development working on yourselves like together as a couple but also like individually mm -hmm. because if we didn't like do that if i didn't do that like i never would have learned about how people think and you know all the kind of things we figured out and that sort of thing so i think it's just being intentional about it and treating it like other areas of your life. Like everyone knows that if you don't go to the gym and you eat like crap for a long time, you're going to get fat. They know that if you stop working, you're not going to have any money, but then like, they don't apply that same, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That same intention went into their relationships. So most people are together and they think that love and attraction is just going to carry things through. And it's, we all know that that's, no. it's not and it's not like the hollywood movies and there's no such thing as a soulmate where you're just like happily ever after yes. um it's yeah treating that area of your life just like any other knowing that if you don't work on it it's going to atrophy and it's going to struggle and so um that's really like i don't know i don't know why we don't think of it the same way like because it's not physical or it's not measured in dollars it's i don't know we think it's like different laws apply to it but it's really the same thing so it's just working on on your relationship on yourself the same way you would any other area of your life yeah and, you know it, it doesn't take a lot to to have like these light bulb moments you yeah. know like when, for us like when we started having all these breakthroughs a couple of years ago it was like i think I, I created i said okay every month let's try and read like a relationship book together that's good let's try and get each other like a random gift Let's try to go away like um, for a weekend every month or something like that, right? Kind of like trying to hit like each of the different love languages almost. Yeah, cool. And we by no means even stuck close to hitting every month on those things. Yeah. And after I'd say like six months, we kind of fell away from it and uh, we need to get back to it. But even just like kind of like doing half that stuff intentionally for several months, like the amount of breakthroughs we had was just insane. I you love know? that. So um, it really doesn't take as much as people think, but it it is something you have to like work on. It's not, not just going to happen. I agree so much. And I think also like changing the language in society about relationships. I mean, mm -hmm. we're so preconditioned that, you know, just that, you know, it's hard work and that it's, you know, that it's, uh, and you know, the joke, you know, behind every great man, there's a woman rolling her eyes, you know, there's like this, like, you know, you can go to any bus stop and talk to any mom anywhere and she's going to shit talk her husband. You know what I mean? So it's like this kind of culture of, yeah. and that relationships are adversarial and yeah. we're, ta we're taught that like right. really like, a, like girls night out they complain about their husbands or guys yes. night out they all complain about yes. their wives right like instead of like exactly. being like you know my partner's awesome and exactly. that sort of thing it's like let's focus on the you focus on the problems you're gonna have more problems 100 you know? percent. Yeah. yeah it's really incredible how much how much little incremental changes in anything we I would have um, couples do this one little thing and it's so little, but um, I would have them every day take a total of, um, it would be like 10 or 15 minutes and that's it. Such a small amount of time where one person talks for five minutes. I, you could be even make it two minutes mm -hmm. and it could just be stuff that they're feeling and it doesn't, it, and they only they're learning how to talk only from their own perspective and they're not talking about the other person so it could mm. be like you know for two minutes straight you're talking about yourself and your feelings and then the person the other person is listening and their job is to their only job is to come without any agenda and their only job is to understand that's it Mm -hmm. So now the per and then they switch, but the person who's talking for the two minutes or the five minutes is saying, we usually build it up to 15 each. So that person, let's say an example would be like, let's say they're mad that you, whatever, 
So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was having, I was feeling really anxious and nervous because I was thinking that maybe you were mad at me, but I wasn't sure. And then I was afraid to approach you, but I'm not, mm-hmm. ta- but now I'm not talking about you. Mm-hmm. I'm saying like, oh, my, my fear of you being mad at me is this or whatever, you know, like, and then just share vulnerably about what your experience is on the other end. Then the other person only the only time they speak is at the end for maybe a minute or two minutes is I think you meant this is this what you meant and then Mm. you say it right and then you switch and there you're not allowed to defend yep but but what you find out is that there's just a lot of silly little miscommunications and assumptions that yeah you know you're like man I I had like it's amazing uh how just kind of talking that out and expressing your feelings like you think your partner knows what you're thinking they don't, uh, you know, <laughs> nine times they out don't. of 10, they don't exactly. And so you might be like, man, like I had no idea this was the issue. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know that this came off this way to you and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's just learning to kind of like speak through those things that yes. you know, we're never really taught that. Right. So you kind of, you have to learn it and, uh, it can be weird and difficult at first, but, um, but once you're able to like move into that level of communication, the amount of conflict that you can solve early while it's still small. Real time. Incredible. Yeah. Think about any real small conflict is just the only reason it becomes bigger is because Because you put it off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also your, then now you're creating, you're building your story. Yeah. You're feeding the monster. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to build my case for court whenever we meet, you know, I'm going (laughs) to gather my data, but, but we're not enemies. Right. Right. So it's mm-hmm. like, what is it? What, so like, it's it's all really, if you think it's all mindset, if the mindset is that I approach every situation with, I'm probably misunderstanding this person if I'm feeling this way, mm-hmm. to understand someone is to love them. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you know one another. If she understands you, she's going to love you. That's it. It's same right. with her, right? Yeah. The amount of times I've told her like, listen, I know you think I can read your mind and I think I'm good at, understanding what people are thinking and but i'm not a mind reader there's things that like like spell it out for me because like i'm probably missing parts of it you know oh yeah yeah and we just have to assume we're wrong yeah we don't know right (laughs) yeah we we have blind spots yeah of course how could we not even someone who we've been with for years still thinks completely different than we do right and so yeah it's just creating that like uh, all these conflicts, they become conflicts because they stay in our head, but it, but they're simple things. Usually they're simple little things that if you talk through them and understand, because all it is, is a misunderstanding, right? Like, why do we fight with people? Cause we misunderstand, but we're really, on, again, we're on the same team. We have the same goals Always. and it's thinking that the other person doesn't, or thinking that the other person had this intention when they didn't and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. It's jumping to conclusions, right? Mm-hmm. And it's usually based yeah. on our own fears or whatever. Right. It's like the four agreements, never make assumptions, oh, right? I love that book. Yeah. So good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also like, I feel like um, one of the things I found in my marriage, I had a re- very good marriage, like a really super connection, best friendship. So like, I found like that one thing about my husband, he was so approachable. Like, I felt mm-hmm. like I could just go to him and talk to him. And when I mm-hmm. approached him, I would just talk about like, Hey, listen, I'm thinking this, you know, but I, there's a really good chance I'm wrong. Could you just clear it up for me? And then it was, we would always just be able to do that. And it, I felt like that was, and just not jump to conclusions because yeah. in the base, you know who that person is. Mm-hmm. It's just fear talking when you jump to a conclusion and react. Right. Yeah. So it comes back to like asking questions. Yes. Right? Like someone talks to you and instead of like our, our natural inclination is to respond back with yes. whatever the first thing is that comes to mind instead of being like, well, why? Or like, you know, tell me more or explain yeah. that to me or where did that come from? And like, usually if you can do that and if you can deep dive, like you'll, you'll get to it instead of like trying to like provide your answer and the other person, you know, may not have felt heard yet or may not have actually gotten to the root cause or what they're really talking about. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know what's weird? There's these buzzwords. So basically, my this there is the power of semantics. I'm sure you, you're. I bet you're on top of this, but semantics to me is everything. I want to write a book on this shit. So mm-hmm. the word why. Mm-hmm. Now I believe in asking ourselves why and what's going on yeah. and what's your why, all that. But if I said to you, which I'm, I don't even want to say it because you, I'd be like. Bradley, why are you wearing, I can't even do it because it's so bad. Bradley, why are you wearing that necklace? What do you feel when I say that? Um, You feel like, you know, you need to explain yourself. Yeah, right. Isn't it weird? Yeah. yeah. So like, I genuinely may just like want to know, but there's something about the word W-H-Y that mm-hmm. creates this kind of, and people, people don't realize it. Like I tell every therapist, never say why, hmm. you know, why did you do that? No, I'm genuinely, you know, we want to know the reason that somebody did something. But when you say, why did you do that? Can you hear it? It's almost like a feeling. And it's like, almost like you feel like you have to explain, which can then lead to like defense, you know, like I have to explain this to you. But hmm. if I were to say, like, it could be like, Hey, what, you know, what was happening? What, what, um, what do you think made you go in that direction? Or what do you think, you know, but if I said, why did you go in that direction? Now you may not, that may not hit you, but Mm -hmm. so many people will like have a reaction to it. They don't know it. Right. Or they feel, yeah, they hop on the defensive. They feel like you're, they don't know, they don't want to explain themselves. A lot of times we don't have a good answer for why we do what we do. Yes. Um, but I think I think context matters, right? I think who of you're course. asking why matters. Yeah. The tonality matters a ton, yeah. right? Like you can ask why in an accusing way, or you can ask why in like a curious, like I want to help, tell me more, kind of way. You However, know? but yeah. if I but but when I said it, even if you like, let's say um, Nancy came in and said, "Why are you still on the podcast?" Yeah. <laughs> but in a <laughs> smile and everything, right? And just what would you feel? uh you, you feel like you know what like why do you care you know well, sometimes what yeah. are you asking me for yeah exactly yeah. but she's not she's just cur- like she could right. genuinely just be curious mm-hmm. it's so yeah. weird like words are funny and yeah. i think a big thing with relationships or all, well, all relationships is that our words are not defined mm. like we don't all use i always say to people here at work i'm like operationally define that word for me because intimacy can mean two different things to two different people. People use it in so many different contexts, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and I have sat with people who are arguing over the same thing. I'm like, Oh, could you just define what you mean by that word? Oh, could you just, Oh, you're talking about two different things. Right. Or like showing love, right? Like, let's say, what's that mean to you? What's that mean to you? Someone could have two totally different love languages, right? As a simple example. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And then they're screaming at one another about showing, you don't show yeah. me love. Yes, I do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, yeah. So mm-hmm. with all of this, I we we went off on relationships. I have no yeah. idea. Why. I didn't expect that, but it's all good. I didn't either. <laughs> so tell us more about anything you want to say, because I don't want to like hijack this conversation into a whole therapeutic thing, which I could. I mean, shit, but. And I'm, maybe maybe we'll have to do like an actual therapy session at some point because now I'm like kind of kind of curious. Let me tell you yeah, something. But, you know what yeah. I'm starting to do on this podcast is therapy sessions mm. on the podcast. I think it's natural, right? That's like your very natural, your natural role. Like it's like I th- I think uh you know a therapist and a podcast interviewer like that's not there's definitely some overlap there. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. You know what? And the real thing is to get to really ask. Like I hold myself back as a podcaster i hold back the questions i really mm. want to ask because the questions i would ask like the person would, might be crying like you know it's like <laughs> like i gotta just i've done it like well you know how to read the situation me. too i'm sure and like know who you can yeah. ask and cry with and that right. kind of thing and, and see their feedback and stuff but um yeah i mean I, I love like for me i think a lot of people say in podcasting, oh, your episode should be 30 or 40 minutes. Like that's what people want. That's what they have time for. And I'm like, well, but you you can't get to depth in 30 or 40 minutes all the time, mm-hmm. you know? So like my yeah. podcasts, I'm like, they're, they're as long as they need to go, mm-hmm. right? Until mm-hmm. I get to the depth 
that I want to get to, right? Because like, if you come out and just like, if you ask a question that you asked five minutes ago, like boom, right off the bat, it would have been like, well, like slow down, right? Like you yeah. have to like build to that or like yeah. dig to that. Yeah. So, um, it is true. And towards yeah. the end, you'll get to like much more heart. Yeah. That's why like, it's, it's tough with podcasting. Cause I know with mine, like all my episodes are like an hour and people might be like, ah, oh, do I have an hour? And then like, if they listen and the first 10 minutes are engaging, they like, don't finish it. And it's like, man, like the second half is always like really where the money's at. You it know? really is. You're right. Yeah. It, it, that each, it just even listening to podcasts, we could learn that. Like if we don't have the time, kind of move in a little bit. I don't know. But yeah. you can miss yeah. a lot too like that. But you can <laughs> If you're only going to listen to half, listen to the second half. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because you hear a lot. Sure. So like if yeah. you, if you had to like, uh, the, and then this is like a question you brought up some really big vulnerability of yours. The vulnerability that you brought up was the the financial piece. And I just want to applaud you for saying that out loud. People don't talk about that also, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There is nothing that can be more stressful than that. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. because it, and, and there's so many other elements. I think even for a, like for a man, just, you know, just what it feels like for a man or even mm-hmm. in the circles that we run in, we oh, have, yeah. we're with like billionaires for God's <laughs> yeah. sakes. And like, yeah. everybody's talking about how they're crushing it. And they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. and like, so to, I had an experience recently where screeched to a halt every, like all of the insurances stopped paying us for like mm. months and months. So there was no money coming in. I'm running the locations, everything. Right. <laughs> So we didn't know what the problem was. I'm not going to get into it. Doesn't matter. It's resolved. It was just like a glitch in a secondary system because we have a bunch of systems, mm-hmm. and it was nothing was going through. So we're submitting bills. Nothing. <laughs> it was uh, just crazy. Yeah. So anyhow, I learned a lot from emotionally from the experience of seeing like how quickly something could turn mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. like the feeling of it like was it taught me a lot. So, and it also taught me how to manage money better, right? Mm. Yeah. And I feel like those hard times, it's like a law of polarity, right? So like, what would you say? I know that you're saying like last night you're up, like what, what, what goes on in your mind and how do you get yourself back? It's tough. Sometimes it's easier than others. Like sometimes you feel like you can't get back on track. Other times it's easier to snap back. Uh, the hardest part when you're laying in bed at night is you don't have anything external to kind of help refocus you, right? It's just you in your head. And if like that freight train of thoughts is going one way, it's really hard to redirect or stop it, you know? So a lot of it is like, you know, when you get into kind of this worry, anxiety, you're not in your creative state. And so when you're trying to think of solutions, your mind almost kind of shuts you off to them, right? Or you think of something and this little voice is like, no, that's not going to work. Like, you know, forget about that, you know? And so it's when you feel like there's not a solution or you feel like there's not like a direct answer that things get really, I don't know, yes, muddy or like difficult to deal with, you know, yes. because yeah. until you have some sort of answer, like you're there, you're in this just state of uncertainty that's ongoing. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and the more you're in, it's, it's like a vicious cycle, right? Cause the more you're in that state, the harder it is to find solutions out of it. Yeah. you know? And so it's really hard to get out of it at times, especially, like I said, laying in bed, but during the day it's, you know, I find for me, if I can get around the right people or people with good energy or people who are like, cause that, I think that's the most contagious, right? Like if you're with yourself and you're in a low energy state, you can look you can go to YouTube and watch a motivational video, or you can read a book or you can work out or whatever, but you, you're, you're trying to change your own energy. Whereas like, instead of borrowing it from someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So like today, like this podcast, like I get energy from this. Right. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I went to an office, uh, and I visited with a couple of guys who were like doing like real big things. And like, you leave there feeling like, man, like, you know, if these guys can do it and they're like, they're all upbeat and positive, like it rubs off on you. So I think a really important thing is, I mean, it comes back to what we talked about before, but relationships and getting around the right people. And, um, that sort of thing. Cause if I, if I'm like, you know, by myself or if I'm around, you know, what I would call most people, I tend to kind of sink into that, like low energy, like not a lot of possibilities state, but like you go to like an RTA event or you're just talking to people in general who are like 
upbeat moving forward doing big things like it's just natural it's going to rub off on you so the more you can get around those people like the better your chances are of of getting out of that you know it's um cool um I just piggyback on that because I agree with everything you're saying. I feel like my my stepmom said to me forever ago in a really hard time, she said, um, which we know this. I mean, I live by this now, but there is always a solution. And then and that mm -hmm. was at the moment that she's saying it, there was no solution. So mm -hmm. she's like, there's always a solution. And then she's like, we just haven't found it yet, Allison, mm -hmm. but we will find it. And like I have that has resonated forever in my heart and any problem that I'm in, that's like a baseline for me. It's like a baseline. Mm -hmm. Like, I think if we can, you know, like atomic habits, like if we can create the, the belief system, the habit inside of us that everything launches, it runs through that filter. There is always a solution. We just mm -hmm. haven't found it yet. And I think the more, like, we do it here, even when there's like a really big struggle. I'm like, remember, we there is a solution. We're good enough to find. And like, also, mm -hmm. it's ne very often a solution will say, oh, that isn't the solution because it only solves part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But what I have found in, you know, becoming a problem solver is that very often it's multiple solutions combined that create the solution. You Again, know? we're looking for that home run solution and yes. it's, yeah. And it's, a and I think, solution. yes, mm -hmm. it's everything we're talking about right here is the same exact thing. So it's being mm -hmm. able to jump off. It's the relationship. It doesn't matter what we're working on. If you know that there's a solution, you come from there, then you're going to see solutions too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other thing you, you were saying, like the uncertainty, it's, it's interesting, kind of like weird, but it's like, this is how people end up when people get to the point where they don't believe that there is an answer. There is so much anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's, they call that the suicide mind. Mm -hmm. That's when somebody, there's no solution. Like they you, they cannot see a way out. Yeah. It's like eclipsed, right? And I, yeah. I, I mean, because I've been there and I get yeah, to that too. point and I'm always able to mm -hmm. kind of lift myself out of it or yeah. like use my, you know, highest self to pull me out of it yeah. and that kind of thing. But exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough because yeah, you do get to that point where you're like, man, there's just like, I'm stubborn enough to know that there is an answer, yes. but I get frustrated that I'm not able to find it. You know, yeah. like I get frustrated with myself and, um, but yeah, do you, you do get to that point come? where you're like, do you believe it will come? I, it's weird. I, I've always had a lot of faith long-term and belief, like yeah. on a long enough time span, but the, the short, the micro, like the next month, the next like short period of yeah. time is where I've always had the struggle, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I can't figure out exactly why that is. Um, yeah. but yeah. You know what I, I've done with money? What? It's helped me a lot. And it's not, it's not like, oh, this is your practical solution to make this amount of money. It's not practical at all. And it works. Mm. And I do it all the time. Well, I've done it right now. So basically, I will just start if I will say, if I find a penny, thank you. Thank you for the mm -hmm. any dollar, anything. I just start going, oh, thank you. Thank you for that dollar. I just start mm -hmm. to, and whenever I have any money problems, I go and find somebody to give money to. Mm -hmm. And I operate in, so because if you think about the solution, if the solution is knowing that we live actually in a really super abundant place and, and that yeah. it's already here, the money it's yeah. here right now. There's nothing more abundant than giving away money, right? Like you're, nothing. you give away money. You're telling yourself like you're abundant. And I have extra to give, right? Yep. Yep. And like any, like also I was thinking about the nighttime thing. Cause that's happened to me where I just can't shut off mm -hmm. at all. Right. Yeah. And it's, and even though you know what to think, you just can't. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you can't think more than one thought. So I'll just pick one mantra and just keep saying it like weirdly over and over again to just stop it. Cause you can't mm -hmm. think of both things. Yeah. You know, it's like a weirdly yeah. obsessive, like, mm -hmm. right? But, yeah. you know, you knowing that there's a solution, isn't that a solution? In a sense, yeah. Cause it may be, cause I feel like so much, if you think about everything you're doing in your life, Bradley, like you're headed for that, 
huge, like, you know, you're, you do, you're hitting all these signals, singles, you're headed for that huge payout. You have to develop these kinds of mindsets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just required and learning how to, to be poor is yeah. very important. Yeah. I mean, well, I think that's actually where the main <laughs> point of frustration you know is, what I mean, comes right? from, is you're like, you're like, I know all these things. I'm in that mindset. I study it and all that. And it's yeah. still yeah. can override, you know, what you're trying to think. Yes. You know, it's and that's, so that's right? the hard part. Yeah. You're like, I know what to do. I'm doing it. And sometimes it's just not working, you know? But what about it? Like, what about like, like there's, and it's funny. It could be such a simple little thing where it's not even like a major move. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like, even just accept Like, I mean, I, I don't, we should never, I don't think you should I think you should strive for where you want to go, but like, except like where you are, you know what I do? Also, another thing when I'm having like horrible time is I like, I'll just stop and I just look around because mm. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm scared. With, during that money time, I did this. I was like, okay, I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose everything is what I was thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, I just said, okay, in this very moment, let me just look around the room. Mm. Is there anything happening? No. Everything, yeah. all fear is future based. It's like what's it going to happen. 100%. Unless you're literally being like physically attacked by someone, like it's all future based. Yeah. But so. think about it, even if you're getting physically attacked, like I think because I have actually been held at gunpoint, <laughs> mugged. Oh, no. like, I was, hit. but seriously, like more of what you're thinking is like what's going to happen. Mm. Are they going to kill me right now? Am I am, am I about to die? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like. Cause it's happening now. So it's like, it's everything's future fear. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. weird? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Crazy. I could talk to you for like the next 50,000 hours. We, we could do a whole podcast series. Yeah. We can, where can people find you? And what would you want to say? Like, as like to anybody who's really having a hard time today, what, what would you want to tell them? Mm. Uh, well, first off where you can find me, uh, probably be through the podcast, not most people podcast. It's on any podcasting platform that you listen to podcasts on. We just started uploading everything to YouTube rumble, like the full video episodes, Instagram at not most people, not dot most dot people. Um, and then best way to reach me is probably through Instagram at Bradley underscore Roth. Happy to connect with anyone there. Uh, so that's probably where to find me or not most people.net. You can find everything there too. And then in terms of like kind of closing advice, I feel like, man, we, like we covered a lot. Um, one thing that I kind of wanted to share that I haven't shared with anyone yet that I just yeah. created was not most people. Like, I think when people hear it, they kind of get it, but they need a little bit more, like they don't really get it like on the level that I do or that I think they do. So I just recently created like some not most people like core tenets like what not most people really is or how we think. And so if you have like maybe three minutes, I could read. I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay. Do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is just the start. This is still kind of a rough draft, I want to hear uh, it. but I did this in like, I don't know, 40 minutes the other day, just off the top of my head. So there'll probably be notes. more at some point, but there's 20 right now. <laughs> and I use the contrast to explain. So first one, and these are like not really in any sort of order. Most people believe saving money is the best path to wealth. As not most people, we believe making money is the true path to wealth. And then number two, most people think success is a one-time event. As not most people, we know that success is a long-term ongoing process. Number three, most people blindly follow authority figures. As not most people, we question everything and follow what truly makes sense. Number four, most people are okay with living in mediocrity. As not most people, we strive for excellence in all areas of life. Number six, most people are afraid of change and disruption of the status quo. As not most people, we are afraid of staying the same and therefore are constantly growing and evolving. Number seven, most people value and pursue material possessions, leaving them empty. Not most people value experiences and memories. Number eight, most people seek validation of their self-worth from others. As not most people, we create our own sense of self-worth. Nine, most people are dreamers who lack action. As not most people, we are doers who execute relentlessly. 
10, most people chase what they desire and it therefore eludes them. As not most people, we attract what we want through the law of action. 11, most people settle in life as soon as it's convenient. As not most people, we refuse to settle and constantly seek out challenge to induce personal growth. Number 12, most people consume more than they produce. As not most people, we are a net positive to society through the value we produce and provide to others. 13, most people are led easily astray because they lack principles and values. Not most people are not easily swayed as they know who they are and what they stand for. 14, not most people follow the crowd or what's popular. As not most people, we follow what's right regardless of what others think. 15, most people live on autopilot going in whatever direction life or other people push them. As not most people, we are intentional in everything we do. 16, most people will sacrifice their morals or ethics for personal gain. As not most people, we refuse to sacrifice those things. 17, most people lack emotional control and are thus ruled by their emotions. As not most people, we learn to control our emotions and act irrationally. 18, most people never pursue their dreams because it's risky. As not most people, we know that per not pursuing what we want in life is the greatest risk of all. 19, most people are overweight, sick, and lack discipline. As not most people, we maintain a high level of fitness through discipline and hard work. 20, most people blame others or outside circumstances for where they are in life. As not most people, we take extreme ownership for every aspect of our lives. And that's what I have so far. Oh my God. Bradley, that is so, that is so good. Thank you. That is so good. I want, I want that. Can I hang it on my wall? <laughs> sure. I mean, that is so good. Thank you. Yeah, you I feel like. Make a reel out of that. You're mm. saying that, right? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Really. I mm -hmm. like that a lot. And that right there, we could have just read that. We didn't have to talk really. <laughs> it's true. Like, I feel like everything we talked about is like th this right here that you just said, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're an amazing dude. Really. I am so grateful that you came on. I think that no matter what is happening right now, it's all the 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 preparation you know the building yeah. of that it's, um foundation funny, right and it kind of like i feel like today is a reminder of like everything happens for you and not to you yes because we recorded this podcast like several months ago yeah and then like the file got screwed up and erased and like yes. i was like oh man that was a great episode but i feel like today like blew that one out of the water really so, yeah, yeah i do too and i mm -hmm. feel like it you know it's timely it's like supposed mm -hmm. to be now you know yeah and it's like you really like i feel like you know, all the things that you're talking about, and maybe this is like personal, well, that's personal, professional, but it's like, I can hear as an outside, I'm an outside observer, right? I'm not you. It's hard when you're in yourself, right? right. But our own subjective experience, but your vulnerability and sharing your struggles, you shared two major, like major life, normal struggles hmm. that most people don't talk about. That bad <laughs> yeah. things in relationships and when they have a money problem and you just mm -hmm. brought it right out there, you are living your brand. Mm. You Thank are. You. And it's like that right there, you're creating, I feel like if you didn't have the, you know, like even the, the financial thing, even if you weren't up like la last night, that that's being built into your, your your mm -hmm. whole foundation that's going wide so it can go high. That's how I see mm -hmm. it. I don't think I'm wrong. <laughs> I think I'm right. I'm <laughs> I just saying, yeah, I, I know I'm, I, I have so, I know I'm right. That sounds really bad, right? But listen, I adore you. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs>